when some of us started trying to do meetings, calling people together, I do remember I was the continuing education lecturer contracted by a pharmacy council a long time ago to go around the country teaching, talking about business of pharmacy. I just finished my MBU, so I was proud to tell people what finance is about. And I kept telling our folks that we got to do this, but nobody minded me because, you see, we have the will to will our pharmacies to our children. And so we do not want to, we don't want to give it up. We want to own the pharmacy, not just own the service. And so that's where the problem comes from. Nobody listens. Now, we have Pale Point Pharmacy as an insurance company, I think, Beach, Beach Doctor, a bank, yeah, funny bank, a group, going around and buying these pharmacy shops. And they are starting from, I told you, lifespan of pharmacy, 10, 15 years. So they target, they look at the age of your pharmacy and they come to you. And most likely, you are actually near retirement. You will be happy for somebody to take that burden off you. And I'm telling you, retail pharmacies in Ghana are burdens. I've been running them for a long time. My dad is a pharmacist. He had a very successful retail pharmacy and manufacturing business. And, and that made us who we are, with the grace of God. So I've seen how pharmacy, retail pharmacies struggle. And we keep struggling. And so when it gets to that point that somebody comes and convinces you that, OK, at this point, let just me take your burden off you. And the prices at which they are buying some of these pharmacies are not something we want to discuss. So this is happening. The three largest are Pill Point, uh, Eight Chemists, and I think NS Chemists. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Yes. A few are coming in here, put them others here. These numbers elude me. I've been told they are 23. I don't know where the 23 comes from, but there are several numbers here. It only tells you that we do not have control over it as pharmacists, and this is happening. In a way, from my perspective, at the end of the day, we are looking for proper pharmaceutical service delivery. If businessmen come and buy it and our patients, our population will do well, maybe it is good. But how are we? Are we as pharmacists going to sit down for other people to come and chop inside our cake? We need to figure that out at some point. So I agree that some of us from here, maybe there are some opportunities that we can influence it. Maybe there is some way that we can influence it. What are some of the enabling environments? I think that the government has been trying a lot and it's been a major fight. It's been, I remember when VAT was being introduced, Johnny would tell you, Blankson and team, we had a big fight convincing the government to exempt essential medicines. At the time, we thought the essential medicines list was three or four medicines. But then when after we've done all the discussions, Blankson saw that the essential medicines were the wrong list, they flatly refused, but it's been a big battle. Unfortunately, that is changing. Last year, they have exempted 483, 552 active ingredients and 483 imported finished products from VAT. Now, they are demanding that prices of medicines come down by about 50%. Wow. Yes, because they said, we'll give you this, you should give it us up, because if you are saying it's VAT, that is increasing the price. So that's something that the pharmacy business group in Ghana is trying to figure out. They've exempted, uh, they've restricted 49 medicines for local manufacture. It is good, but it's not bad. It's bad for me because I had a blood tonic that I was manufacturing in India for a neighbor that I was selling and making good money in Ghana. My license expires in June. Oh, it has expired. I can't import it again. So now I'm talking to uh, Kina Pharma and a few people to see if I can do local manufacture of the same thing. The good thing is that another factory in Ghana will be able to do it. Uh, so it improves the economy in a way. They've also, the Fiscal Society has been talking about what they can do to ensure that we can regulate better. Our regulation is, to say the least, regulation is one of the bigger problems we need to talk about. We need to provide capacity to do that. But that's an issue that we also need to look at. Now, um, Ghana is also trying to set itself as the place to be, medical tourism. I just last week, and I'm sure maybe today the same minister will talk a little bit about that. Ghana wants to be the hub of manufacturing in West Africa because our regulatory system, our regulatory authority in Ghana has been adjudged the best in the ECOWAS region, and it is true. It's not just because my friend is a chief executive, but we just do a better job. Mm -hmm. And 
business. So within the Franco, within the West Africa region, we do a good job. But the markets and the competitions within that strip needs to be talked about. If we can get our act together, we can be the source of all medicines. Even though Nigeria will always beat us up, but we've got to figure out a way to do this, and we can do it ourselves. This is just some numbers that I got from the BMI report that was published this year, in January of this year. Just the sheer numbers. They may look big, but it's still too small. The market is very, very small in pharmaceuticals. We have huge industries in Ghana, like uh, Fight Riker. They cannot really use up all their capacity, so they need to go into the coerce market. So if we are going to Ghana, we need to be thinking about do we just stay in Ghana or do we have strategies to be expanding beyond the borders and capturing everything. These are key. But then you could see that gradually things are going up in there. It's been, this is our sales forecast. You can see that even though the percentage of the GDP is coming down, it is projected that sales of pharmaceuticals is going to go up. We all know that this is going to happen. And so we've got to figure out, not just based on population growth, but just the sheer fact that if you look at the demographic transition, the epidemiologic transition, we are getting more non communicable diseases. They become richer. So these things are happening. So we need to be able to provide the medicines that are needed for them. Indeed, the discussion that I just came from in uh, Geneva, we're talking about non communicable diseases, what are the healthcare supply chains that are there, and are we ready in Africa to discuss some of these things, to manage some of these things? We know how we do them here, I'm not too sure how we do them over there. The global trend says that Africa is going to be the leader. Now I'm putting these things across because if you are going to talk about the business of pharmacy in Ghana, we don't have to just think about it about the pharmacy that you want to go and open where you are building a house now. But we need to be thinking about how we can do a bigger business, how we can collaborate and expand it. I mean, one of my goals, frankly, is to buy off all the outpatient dispensing facilities from the Ghana Health Service. We got to do that. We started talking about this in 1992. We've not gone anywhere, but we have to target that and do that. Linda said it. I mean, and I asked the question of the Ghana Pharmacist Platform: Why do we want government to employ us when they are not paying as well? We can sell our services to them. We got to figure out how to do this. All the indicators, I can see this some analysis. Africa is the place. Now, even though we don't manufacture a lot of APIs in Africa, everything seems to be brought from China. We have the petrochemical industry now. In Nigeria has always had it. Ghana, we are having our oil. We can start looking at it. Yes, we can talk about the environmental impacts and all that, but we can put in place our mitigation strategies. So these are ideas and these are things we all need to be thinking about. And I don't have to have on it. Now, this is the Ghana's local manufacturing industry. It's struggling, but we can do well. It is struggling. Nobody knows the numbers. That is one of the problems that we have. Maybe the IT system is going to help us, but Sometimes when you talk about IT, I didn't want to talk a lot about it because as Jenny said, we've been doing some of these things for a very long time in a number of countries. The problems are not just that simple. It's, it's just a myriad of things. And the question about governance, the question of what I call managed chaos. I'll give you my personal example. When I was managing a procurement unit in Ghana, we put in place a software to do end-to-end -end management of the procurement system. As soon as we left, everybody made it go back. This doesn't work anymore. <laughs> so, if you want to do business in Ghana as a pharmacy, what is the legal environment? And there are several laws that are there, and you've got to figure out a way to navigate these laws, and you know what I mean. And unfortunately, not all the laws work harmoniously with each other. And sometimes we butt heads. And we don't know, we don't have the capacity to ensure that all these laws work very well and are implemented. The first is the Food and Drugs Authority. I mean, that is the PNDC. I was surprised that, and I checked this in the, in the play when I was coming back, it's a PNDC law. I thought it was a new one, so if I'm wrong, somebody correct me. But we still have that. It's the, the objective to provide a standard for sale of food and farm and then, uh, and then other drugs and other related matters. And by the way, there is the Ghana Standards Authority. They also provide standards, and so this is where some of the conflicts come in there. Then we have the Ghana Pharmacy Council, the Pharmacy Act, of 1994, which replaced the Pharmacy Board Act of 1964 after 20 years of discussions. So that is also there. Their job or their objective is to secure in the public interest, underlying public interest, 
the high standards of the practice of pharmacy. But many a time I see them not securing the public interest, but the pharmacist's interest. So we need you to see. When the registrar comes, don't see that. Sir. And then recently, we had a new agency for the HEFRA, the Health Facilities Regulatory Agency. And they also have a competing mandate to license and monitor facilities that provide public and private healthcare practices. So yes, I'm a pharmacist, I'm opening a pharmacy, but now HEFRA is supposed to come and register my premises. Pharmacy Council law has that same provision, but that provision has not been repealed. It is still in the law. So yes, you will get an advertisement that HEFRA is coming to your shop, and Pharmacy Council also wants your money. So all this confusion is going on there. So, that is the legal environment we have to deal with. And the Warakin law is the Ghana Companies Act, Act 179. How you register a company, how you are structured, etc., etc. Et and the, there are other laws that impact our work. The laws, the, the regulatory, the tax laws, and the trade laws, etc. But these are the ones that you will need to be familiar with in order to operate as a pharmacy or as a pharmacist in the country. Now, I took this slide from a presentation that was made at the last AGM in home, the annual General Meeting of the Defense Class Society of Ghana. There's a committee that has been put together to um, come up with the model pharmacy. That's what they call it, model pharmacy. Myself and Chrissy are supposed to be on the committee, but we don't necessarily agree with some of the recommendations. <laughs> <laughs> I need to say that. Now, the whole goal is to see if Ghanaian pharmacists can take over this trend of the businesses taking our business and to start building pharmacy for pharmacists. Mm -hmm. Now, it sounds selfish, but it's good. So the whole idea is, so the, one of the slides that came out of it, they call this weaknesses, but I titled it weaknesses or opportunities. And these are along the areas of, yes, in our community practices, there are poor adherence to the standards. Yes, there's limited scope of the pharmaceutical services because for the most part, somebody wants paracetamol, two tablets that you give to the person and you go on with your life. We need to figure out a way to expand the services to do some more things. I don't know all the things that you've been talking about, but we're acronyms, so I won't go there. But these are things you've got to do for our population. Remuneration for pharmacists is very poor. Now, the public sector takes the lead. As we speak now, I think we are producing about 400 pharmacists a year, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not too sure what we're going to do with all of them. But we are insisting government should employ all of them. I don't think government can or should employ all of them. So we need to figure out what to do with all those pharmacies. And then, again, proper pharmaceutical services are not available outside of the cities. Our laws require that pharmacy-only medicines be dispensed or managed by only pharmacists. But if you are a diabetic or a hypertensive and you have your prescriptions are for class B drugs and you are living in, how do you say those uh, villages that the man uses in public? <laughs> How are you going to get all your medicines? Do you always have to drive to the city to buy your glibenclamide? So we need to figure out ways and means of providing these services to the population. And unfortunately, pharmacists can be terribly stubborn when it comes to that. I had a case in Namibia where HIV AIDS patients who were terminal were being given uh, morphine-based products at home. No pharmacist was going to go home to go and dispense these things to the those. But then the pharmacists were insisting that it's a pharmacist only medicine, so don't put it there. Do you want these poor patients to die in pain? So we need to figure out how to be responsive to the population, otherwise our businesses won't do, do well. So, what option do we have as GPSA? GPHA. Did I say GPSA? <laughs> that's the Ghana. No, that's Ghana Pharmacy Students Association. I used to be their president, so I like talking about it. There are several options that we can look at. And I start again, we need to look at collaborations. We need to look at collaborations. We need to look at collaborations. We need to look at partnerships. Are you going to form a chain or a standalone or, or whatever? I mean, yes, it is nice to come to the shop in the evening and say, Mouton Seng. <laughs> and then put the money in your pocket and go to Kampiski. Yeah, it is nice, right? Yeah. My manager keeps complaining that every time, by the time she comes to the morning, now I have control of the bank account from here, so I'll transfer it. We want to do that, but we need to keep that up. We need to look at what options are there for us. So if we want to go in there as an individual, yes, you can go. 
But are you going to go in partnership with friends? Are you going to go into retail community pharmacy? Are you going to go into wholesale, into imports, into retail? It's a cutthroat business. I mean, are you going to go do, do ethical products? Are you going to do generics? What are you going to do? There is a PSGH model pharmacy that I don't think was approved at the last PSGH meeting, so the committee is going back to go and think about it. I want to support that, but it needs to change. We need to figure out how we can all do this together. The way they are proposing it, I don't agree, and we'll be talking to them about it. We will ask GPHA, will we start thinking about something from here? I mean, somebody said we are all high income earners, right? So if you say you are going to start selling shares of a GPHA facilitated or own thing and it's $10,000 per pop, can't you raise about $5 million and go and shake the market? Yeah. Okay, let's start thinking about it. And these are some of the practical things we need to be thinking about. Are we going to go into retail pharmacy like everybody else, build another chain and compete? Are we going to go into manufacturing? Are we going to think about going regional? What other things can we do? Can we expand our services to the population outside of Accra? The president of the Physical Society of Ghana, Ben Boji, has got this concept of district pharmacies, and he's very passionate about that. But I always say that you can't open a district pharmacy, a pharmacy near a district hospital, and there's a district hospital that does not have a pharmacist, but is crowding you out. There's a classmate of Quincy and Johnny who did that, and he ended up in a malaria control program because he could not survive there. It is not right. No, he's doing a good job now, I can see that. But the fact is, he tried to be a good guy and go into the rural area to open a pharmacy. He was in the middle of chemical sellers. The hospital that he was uh, in front of was stocking and dispensing everything, but there was no pharmacy.